Hello everyone, welcome back, uh, here is Ramsen, and today we are delving into fascinating array manipulation problem that also serve as excellent case study in algorithmic strategy. So uh, you won't uh, want to uh, miss this uh, insightful session, so without further ado, the problem at hand involves transforming an integer array into a non-decreasing sequence, and the catch the only operation you can perform is to replace an element with two uh, elements that sum to the original. So it's a unique constraint that adds up a layer of complexity to what might otherwise be a straightforward sorting problem. So uh, prepare for engage your problem solving skills fully. So before diving into algorithmic, details, let's ground ourselves with uh, a concrete uh, example. So we are given an uh, array, uh, let's write it down, 393, uh, and as you can see here, the uh, element 9 uh, is, uh, yeah, it needs to be replaced, so we can replace it with uh, 3 and 6, so 3 and 6, because they are summing to 9, uh, but now, uh, yeah, we add those elements, we still have a 6 that is problematic. And we can replace 6 with 3 and uh, 3. So our array will be 3, 3, uh, 3, 3, and 3. And it took just two operations to sort it, so our output should be uh, 2. Okay, so now when we understand the problem, uh, let's look at uh, constraints. So our constraints are uh, as follow. We need to handle array with length of uh, 10 to the power of 5, and also the elements uh, are of size 10 to the power of uh, 9. So the strategy uh, itself is a, a greedy approach, but uh, one that execute with precision. So uh, the concept of uh, dynamic uh, upper bound is also crucial. So this uh, adaptive limit will guide uh, our replacement as we traverse the uh, array. So before we move uh, to the code, let's delve into a foundational idea, the dynamic upper bound. So uh, think of it as a speed limit uh, while driving. So a guideline that can uh, change uh, based on road condition or in our case the element in the array. So as we iterate through the array from the last element to the first, this dynamic upper bound adjusts to ensure that we are replacing elements in the most efficient manner. So the reason for iterating in reverse is that the last element acts as an initial upper bound, providing a frame uh, of reference for the element that uh, preceded. So now with uh, this understanding, let's translate uh, this insight into Python code. So uh, let's dive uh, with code. So we are given solution and minimum replacement that take uh, array of numbers. And first, what we did do is operation equals zero and previous bound will be num minus uh, one. Uh, so initially we define uh, uh, the operation to zero and previous bound uh, initialized to the last element of the array and will function as our dynamic upper bound through the uh, algorithm. So uh, next uh, for num in reverse num minus one, so here we employ a reverse loop to iterate through the array uh, intentionally omitting the last element. So recall that the last element serves as a reference point, uh, a sort of final uh, upper for our sorting uh, endeavor. So now, uh, interesting part, so num of times will be num plus previous bound minus one, divided without remainder, previous bound, and operation plus 
equal number of times times minus one. So uh, at this uh, point, we introduce a critical function to calculate number of times the frequency with which the current element num needs to be uh, divided to align uh, in upper previous bound. So this elegantly uh, uh, scenario where num is either uh, divisible or indivisible by our uh, previous uh, bound. Uh, so then we have uh, operation uh, plus and uh, subsequently we increment the operation uh, counter and the essence uh, decrement by one is essential as one of the new element that replaced the original will assume its position, hence not uh, constituting a new operation. Uh, so now uh, previous bound will be num divided without remainder num of times. And finally, return operations. Okay, so this is our implementation. And to close the loop uh, iteration, we update uh, previous uh, bound and this adjustment is vital as it uh, influenced the maximum uh, permissible value for elements in the uh, subsequent iteration, minimizing future uh, replacement. So uh, upon completing uh, the loop uh, function, we return uh, operation uh, which hold the minimum number of uh, transformation needed to sort the uh, array. So uh, there we have it. Let's run it for uh, our test cases. Uh, example, yeah, one, three, nine, three, output two. So uh, all good. And there we have it, uh, efficient algorithm. So now we can uh, submit it to verify it's working. So I'm submitting it and yeah. Our implementation beat 85% uh, with respect to a runtime and also 80% with respect to uh, memory. So uh, yeah, efficient algorithm for sorting in array with minimal operation and leveraging a dynamic greedy approach at Ruli. Really, uh, it's a fine balance uh, of a strategic uh, implementation and uh, efficiency. So that concludes the live coding segment for today and if this walkthrough uh, clarified the uh, nuances of this problem uh, yeah and if you have uh, any further uh, question or comments please leave them uh, in the section below and yeah we forget about complexity analysis so uh, time complexity is uh, linear so on uh, because we have uh, just one loop and also space complexity is o one, so it's uh, constant, so uh, efficient and uh, elegant code. And for those coding in uh, Go, Rust, C++ and much more, you will find uh, implementation uh, in these languages in the video uh, description uh, below. And yeah, there we have it, a seemingly complex problem to solve with a uh, brilliant of array manipulation and greedy algorithm. And if you follow along and understand the solution, consider it uh, to improve your uh, coding tool. And thank you for joining uh, today's uh, session. And yeah, uh, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe for more coding uh, adventure. And most importantly, keep practicing, keep learning, and happy coding. And see you next time.